Good. Hey, everybody. This is Sheets, and I have Michael Brayhoff. Uh, Brayhoff Jackson. That's pretty good. Brave Jayhawk Jensen on. We're going to review uh, week six in Survivor Pool, and then we're going to go on to week seven and beyond. But first, we have a trip report. Uh, <laughs> so, as I mentioned last week, um, I had threatened to come out of retirement from poker. And they, all, they always do at some point. Yeah. And, and well, you know what? My, my friend lived in New Jersey and I've been threatening to see his house for like three years now. And he says, why don't you come and play a World Series of Poker online surfing event? This is him. I'm not playing. I'm negative EV. I can't play. I don't know the patients. I don't feel like it. Blah, 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 blah. So he said, Eric, you haven't seen my place in forever and ever pretty much. Well, okay, fine. So I was going to go down three weeks ago. The whole place got COVID. So we had to cancel it. But, you know, I already set up the account. I'm, like, I'm going to find a time to do it. So I said, you know what? Screw it. So yesterday I went down, drove two and a half hours to where he lives. I put, uh, I entered two tournaments. I entered a 2K six max, which, I mean, you want to talk. Oh, Jesus. Money. You want to talk, you want to yeah. throw money in the trash can. Okay. That's it. Someone that's had the no work with solvers in seven years. You're going to throw in that. And I altered and I also entered the 888. Okay. With, with re-entries. So we get down there, and as I register, the 2K is canceled, even though there was a guarantee. I mean, are you kidding me? Like, they couldn't make their guarantee or something, so they just canceled it. They have no <laughs> shit. So I'm like, okay. No, they do not. I have the, the 888. And so I actually put up on State Kings, and I was very I was very open. I said, listen, you guys want to have a piece of me? Fine. I, I'm hopeless. I can't win. I'm going to charge you a dollar eighteen just for no reason. It's probably throwing money in the trash can, but you want in. Go for it. Dude, I weaved my way through all the wizards and got 12th freaking place. Oh, wow. Yep. That's yep. fantastic. How, yep. how many How many people are in it? Uh, a couple of hundred, I guess. I cashed like 4,000 or something. And uh, and I was, didn't, I was in danger of making the final table, too. And I just, you know, poker is poker. I ran into something late. But it was a lot. Listen, it was a lot of fun. And I basically played the exact same way that I played back in 2006. You know, that's, that's still better than most people, boy. Yeah, and didn't run into, you know, listen, I ran into some, I didn't run into that many, you know, issues, you know, and I, you know, won a couple of flips, lost a couple, and it was a lot of fun, and I got back at four in the morning, reminding me of what it was all used to be like to play online. Yeah, yep. Um, And so there was that, and and uh, back into retirement, okay, Um, and we're going to get to uh, Survivor Pool stuff, so let me just kind of review last week. Um, I do want to mention I, I I'm not really active I'm not very active on there anymore. But a few months ago, I had my 20th birthday on two plus two forums. Oh, very nice. That's, uh, that's a pretty pretty small group, I assume that, nice. that's been on there 20 years. So, as you guys recall, hopefully from last week, uh, we talked about our particular pool. So, I you know, Michael Michael is is really deep in his hypothetical survivor pool um, pool, which we'll talk about. Uh, uh, and I have entries in three pools i was in the circle pool i was in this pool with a zillion people in it that had uh going to double picks in week nine uh and then a regular single pick pool now with respect to circa uh as you guys might remember i was back and forth we were back and forth between playing the rams or playing miami and we thought there were kind of like pros and cons with both i knew we were going to end up uh when we talked about this uh, and we did actually uh, go with the Miami over there. Um, it, it definitely uh, it definitely restrains us for some decisions in the future, and we definitely thought about it, but we just kind of opted for 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 that route. Um, in the double pick pool, we uh, in the double pick pool we went Rams on both entries because um, uh, we knew we wouldn't have knew them in the future. And the single pick pool, we went Rams on both entries as well. So it was weird. So we went all four Rams, uh, except for in Circa, where we, went, where we were rooting against them, sort of. Yeah. So it was a weird. It was a weird route, if you want another two. Um, the real, the real tragedy. I mean, and this is this is what Survivor Pool is like. I mean, but neither of the neither of the games were really well. I should say the Miami was sort of in doubt for like a few minutes. I guess they were down fourteen nothing, and you blinked, and they were and that was up, yeah, and they were up twenty fourteen. Um, but uh, 25% of pools across the board have buffed, okay? And and I really hope that they go to church or whatever it is that they do to not only 
play Buffalo in the first place, but to get away with it the way they did uh, against the Giants, the Giants stalling out on the one-yard line uh, twice, once at halftime and second with the holding call and the non-holding call. Buffalo with, 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 it was desperately trying to knock them out of Survivor. They just couldn't quite do it. They were trying to lose so hard. But you know, you give the you give uh, you know Tyron Taylor the ball, and you know it's uh it's asking for a lot. So that that so, was so. Crap. Wait, did you did you not like Buffalo as a pick last week? No, because I was I'm, I got I had other plans for Buffalo. Okay, then for me, so I, I just want to no, they, they were they were a good pick last week. So, yeah. so as we get to this week, we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. So, so what, my what, hypothetical what, what were you looking plan, at last week? I, I I tweeted take Buffalo if you have them. Okay. After that, I liked LA Rams, Jacksonville, and Las Vegas. Yeah, Miami and other top two top teams too valuable down the road to use this week. Like Kansas City, if you still have Philadelphia as well. I I, I tweeted that after the Chiefs had won. Now I don't know. It's hard once you're out of something to I know. like I know. to think what you would have done. I, I know what we would have done if we were still in circa. I would have been pushing for the Rams. Um, even though I knew it was going to be chalky, yeah. I did the same thing last year with Jacksonville. My argument this time would have been, well, look how slowly small picked uh, Washington. Washington was last week. Even though they were less available, everyone had the Rams. I don't know what we would have done. I, I I would have pushed for the Rams. We probably there's no way I would have taken. Miami. Oh, I guess we would have took. We uh, ne- never would have taken Miami, but we would have had Buffalo. So I guess we just would have took. If we had one entry only, we would have took Buffalo. If we had multiple, that's where it would have, that's where it would have been tricky. Um, how much? How much Buffalo and in, in, in if any Rams or not? All right. So this is the deal. Okay. So so I have Survivor Grid up, and one thing that you'll notice, I guess, starting now, but as we get towards the end of the year, is you might recall when we I first started ranking these guys by Survivor Grid's EV. Like the top team would be like 1.05, 1.04, 1.06, whatever. And you start to see these teams are like 1.4, 1.38. And and the reason for that is because as these top teams get used, their popularity becomes so low, their availability comes so low, that you get a team that's a big favorite to win that nobody can play. That's when the EV kind of like jumps through the roof, you know, and and that's when you save teams like that. You can you can kind of lay hammer on people, and it's hey, listen. These are these are precious uh, precious bullets you have, so you have to really figure out when to when to drop them on people. You know, like as as I you know mentioned last week, we we faded both Detroit and Miami last week in my double pick pools, so that we can have them available to pound on people, and they were like eighty percent owned. You know, which is perfect. Even yeah. though they won, okay, obviously it'd be better if they lost, but good, let them win. Now we have we have these. These, these leverage plays that we can kind of drop on people. So, so cutting right to it, right. You see all these teams that have like this high EV and that's because, you know, they're not really, you know, they're, they're a combination of, of good ownership, of good, of low ownership and, and, uh, and, and high better plays later. Yeah. Oh, well, high, well, high probability to win right now. That's why their EV is high, but they only, you know, some of them also have, you know, obviously can use later. Um, so I'm just going to get right to it. Um, this week you might wonder. You have Seattle playing Arizona. Why, why is there implied EV? Like, where are they? Did, did did they miss them on the list somehow? Where where where? Why is Seattle? Oh my God! There must be like a glitch. Why are they only point eight seven? Because they're gonna be pounded. Okay, and we talked about this since week one. Okay, we talked about this being the week that you can do some damage now again you know that doesn't mean they're going to lose right but when you got a team like this at 60 percent 60 percent ownership these are i mean there are very few opportunities to to get like a lot of leverage on the field and this week is one of them and this is one of the reasons why we saved buffalo so that we can go after these people this week um so uh if you have so seattle yeah big favorite but they're going to be really really popular you, you, I hopefully you get a team that you can go after these people with. And we fortunately saved Buffalo for the spot in Circa, and that's what we are going to do. So, uh, for us, Circa is very, very easy. Um, uh, 
uh, as far as, well, okay, I guess we'll wait about the double pick pools and what we'll, we'll get you some of your opinions on some of these kind of top teams. Uh, starting with Seattle, this is a good example. I saw another article amongst infinity more of these to come on can we really trust the fourth down bot? Can we really trust the math behind whether you should go for it or not? I mean, obviously, yes, but everyone's going to have their reasons why not. You can, you can tell someone two plus two is four, essentially, and someone's going to argue with it. And what you see here in Seattle, I'm not saying I would never, ever take Seattle, but it's clearly – with these pick percent, with this, with this pick per percentage combined with their win equity, it is a losing proposition play for this week alone. And it's really, you know, it's also a team that you could very easily need later in the season. And some, a lot of people are still going to take it because they're going to sort by win percentage, which is a fine way to start. And they're more concerned with advancing rather than positioning themselves what, what better well for the latter weeks. And that's where the mistake is right there. You have to make it to those latter weeks to have a chance. If you advance with Seattle, there's not going to be any carnage from this week that could help improve your situation to get down to smaller numbers in the pool where you can win this thing. you got to lay out. Seattle is an absolute layoff this week. If they were like 14 point favorites, I, you know, the EV could say 0.85, I would be all in on Seattle. For me, like if they're that likely to win, I, I, I don't even care. But they're going to lose. What, what, what percentage of the time are they going to lose? 25% of the time? Yeah. I'm going to take that 25% and hope it works out. Yep. So this is, and, and, and this is, you know, one of those spots. You got to, you know, you gotta, you're just going to have to try it. And I mean, there's a nice little, nice little spot. You can use Seattle in like week 10, for example, like if you wanted to. Um, yeah, Se Seattle is definitely a team that you, you can you very well might need. And again, you look at their, their, their outlook and it's like, well, yeah, there's only a couple green spots. Yeah, that's true. But look through what you're going to have left when you get to week 10. Right. When you get to week 17. And for those that say, well, that's so far out there, I don't like looking that far out. I'm not telling you have to pick Seattle there. You want to have a list of viable options. And Seattle being a home game against Pittsburgh, who could very well be completely out of the playoff picture, is a really nice option to have to take at the end of the season in week 17. And then also right there in week 18, Arizona, there's no way they're making the playoffs. The spread might be – the week 18 spreads, they don't count for anything. If Seattle's playing for a playoff spot and they're in week 18, they are going to be very large favorites. They, ju they just are. Arizona might be competing for the number one overall pick. Seattle might need to win to get in. With two spots available for Seattle at the end of the season, it, I'm not calling it a save. I call this more of a fade because yeah. Yeah. so many – but but – with the insurance of that little extra, oh, this is a team I can actually need at the end of the season too. Yeah. Um, so let's say that you had, you know, if you don't want to play Seattle, which you don't, let's say, why don't you rank these other teams with respect to, let's just say you have them available because I don't know who people have available. Yeah. Like, like so we happen to, we have San Francisco available, but because of what we did, we, we're going to need them in Thanksgiving. Like we already burned Miami. We already burned Detroit. We already burned Dallas. You know what I mean? Regardless of what the pool type is, San Francisco is a complete save for this week. Yeah. With their seven-point favorite, you got to be dropping to the, the twos, threes. and I mean, I'd rather take a pick them over them. They have, four, they have five spots where if you had them, you would take them, and instead you might be end up taking a six point favorite instead of an eighteen point favorite. So it'll be whatever you're dropping now from San Francisco to one of the two or three point favorites. You're going to make up for later by having a ten point higher favorited team in San Francisco than some six point favorite later. So San Francisco is, a, is an absolute save. Kansas City, I'm, I mean that's just, it's just, again it's just another waste. You need them for the 15-16 combo week, regardless of 
uh, pool type. So that leaves Buffalo. It, I actually don't I, – I, I don't like Buffalo this week. The reason I don't like it is I would have just used them last week myself as a 15-and-a-half point favorite. So the, the way I see it is – I, I, I wouldn't want to save Buffalo from last week to this week. Let's assume I only have one entry because when you have a portfolio like you have, it's much different. Um, I, if I had a large portfolio picks, I would be taking a sprinkle of Buffalo for sure this week because I, I don't want to take all two and three point favorites. But Buffalo at 15 last week, I just like that because the next drop down would have been what the Rams at six and everyone, and a lot of people are going to be on the Rams. I would rather drop in week seven to a three point favorite and took Buffalo last week. And if you still have Buffalo look, you know, week 11, there's some, there's some good choices in week 11, but week seven, week 17, week, uh, week 17 for Buffalo is certainly an attractive, uh, proposition and you never know week 18 might be fantastic too what if miami's you know frozen so, in the in, so, in, in the three seat or something so, so the issue is right so we talked about this with these three specific teams right every week they look good right? mm-hmm. <laughs> because, because they're good teams right and w- in week 17 if you don't if you do not have San, no one's gonna have san francisco left if you don't have buffalo or philly and most people want to have philly because they'll use them in 16 it's not that it's a big drop. It's gonna you're gonna be on a big group. For week That's seventeen, true. you're looking at being on a large group of Cleveland, Jacksonville, and the third best pick is the Rams. And I mean, no one's gonna have Kansas City left. So the the top three picks outside the, the top tier teams in seventeen are Cleveland, Jacksonville, and the Rams. So if you don't have if you if you use buffalo somewhere else you need to make sure that you have at least one of those one of those teams yeah, more, more so more so jets suppose cleveland is going to be crushed they're, in, um, yeah i mean they're, and they're going to be well, they're, they're going to be picked in you know nine and 15 as well yeah. the rams are going to be picked well we'll get to that maybe. but they were picked a lot last week and, yeah. and they're going to be picked look at their run now now the rams all of a sudden out of nowhere they have a really nice three-week run of 15 16 17 and again week 18 you never know they play at san francisco but if san francisco is is locked into one seed and the rams need to win the rams are a possible playoff team it's not that you're saving them for the end it's that it's nice to have options to have a team available for multiple weeks in a stretch okay so if you you, look if you if you want to save buffalo that's that's great if you want to save San Francisco, that's great. You want to save Kansas City, that's great. You love to have all those teams, but you have to play somebody. Right? You've got to play somebody, Eric. So, that's right. And if we don't want to play Seattle, then we have just a couple of options. So, first of all, there's – I'm going to look at Cleveland, and they, as we mentioned before, um, they they are very usable in the future. Uh, I, I have seven teams possible, and I only like two of them. Let's see yeah, if we can I only, we, I, I, we match. We match every week. Let's see if we can match. Yeah, again. I'm into two. Uh, Baltimore's a, so the, the two teams that I would, would look at would be uh, Las Vegas and Tampa would be my second one. And, and the reason why I would say Tampa as my second one is for the very reason that some people might not want to use Tampa as their second one. Um, because in week 13, um, Tampa, whoa, they used to – it's so funny the way everything gets repriced. It's great, it's yeah. not as usable. Mm-hmm. I was thought that, that Tampa would be like this big this big team in 13. But Tampa apparently sucks. So, um, so if you can get away with it, you know, if you can – body English, Tampa, you know, um, that's possible. And the only – the other teams – I guess that was the old, those were the two that I was looking at was Tampa and Vegas. Those are my second and third. And the reason okay. you didn't say the other one is you just don't have them. Washington is the best one. Oh, okay. But a lot of people have used them. Remember, yeah. I'm, I'm listing these based on I'm not in. Right. Um, but I'm going to always include multiples because no, there's no way someone's used – well, I guess you could have used maybe Washington and Las Vegas. That is very possible. But – my favorite's Washington. Just I'm going strictly based off of the averages here for pick distribution. 
they're like a half a percent picked because they're slightly less favored than this other group of seven teams. And they've also been picked more than any other team other than the Rams. Now, coincidentally, the Rams are the highest picked of this group, and they were also probably the second highest picked team of this group of team other than Baltimore. So I would never pick the Rams for two reasons. And it worked, I, I love it because it, it works out. They're the highest projected pick team of this group of seven. Okay. The, the group of seven being the two and three point favorites. Like they, and they, it's Vegas Rams, Washington, Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland. New, I, I threw new Orleans in there, but I guess they're only a one point favorite. Now. Okay. Um, but the Rams have lots of possible playability. It could change, but at the time it is possible. They are not 0-6. They are, what, 3-3 three and three or 4-2. and two. The record dictates that it's, it's worth holding on to this team because it, their chances of making the playoffs are preserved with their record. It doesn't matter how bad they, people think they might be. I think they're average anyway. So Tampa Bay – a lot less playability and they have smaller ownership than the Rams and slightly less than Las Vegas. Las Vegas I had as my third. It it just really depends who you have in weeks nine and 10 available. Cause you, if you used a bunch of Detroit and Miami, you probably need to have Las Vegas available for those, for, for those weeks. If you have your Miami and you have your Detroit, you can play Las Vegas here. And I think Washington's automatic because I think in a perfect scenario situation, in a perfect scenario situation, you have Seattle losing and Buffalo losing. I know it's not going to happen, but if it does happen, I want to be on the less, the least owned team of that next group. When I drop down, I like to drop within that next group. And you have to drop off the Rams uh, to do that. It could work out a little bit differently, but when people tend to drop, they're going to pick the next highest favorite. And sometimes the win percentage is so similar, but you'll have two teams that are completely worthless and unusable. And one's like a three and a half point favorite. One's a two and a half point favorite. And one will be like 5% owned and one will be one. Well, you have to take the 1% owned team. You're sacrificing a couple percentage points, but in the perfect scenario, I want to scoop this thing. I don't need it to be. I I, I assume this is math uh, backed. I would. I'm going to give up that little bit of win percentage for the perfect scenario of, of my team winning and the other three team losing. The other three being Seattle, Buffalo, and the Rams. Yeah. Um, the next big spot that people are going to deal with. So there's Seattle this pat this coming this this week. And the next big spot that's going to be coming is next week. So in mm-hmm. week eight, you have, I'm going to get this right, the Chargers, right? That's LAC. They're not the Clippers. Yep. Right? They're the Chargers uh against a Justin Fields less Chicago team with basically a hundred percent availability for the Chargers. Yeah. Um uh you have other teams that are favored around here, but all of them have been used. You know, they're the same team, and they're teams you might want to save for later. Right? Yeah. And, and that's why when I look at this, I'm I'm crossing out Miami. If I make it this far, I just want to keep going with them. I I I, I want to hold them. I, you're looking at week 15, week 14. If Tannehill's out, I mean they're going to be they're going to be two touchdown favorites against the Malik team in week 14. I want, I want to hold Miami. I want to hold Kansas city next week. I'm not going to get through week six and seven without using Buffalo to use them at eight. I mean, at that point, you got to at least save them for the 10, 11 combo week. And that's where, if you didn't use Baltimore, it, Baltimore is kind of like drops into your lap a little bit. Oh, it's, Baltimore, it's next- Baltimore is in one of our entries in one of our pools. We basically saved Baltimore for this. Um, yeah. It worked out pretty well. Yeah. I feel less. I feel less dumb. I really actually wanted to take Washington and and Baltimore in Week One. I just, yeah. I just couldn't do it. I, I just, I just couldn't do it. But if I got through, it ended up working out well. I mean, I, you won Washington two weeks ago. Well, I played them and lost. But Baltimore would have been really nice here because the other teams around them are more valuable. Miami, Kansas City, Buffalo, Detroit, more valuable. 
San Francisco, Washington, uh, Phil- I'm sorry, Philadelphia, Dallas, more valuable. So Baltimore is really the only team I would personally want to play next week outside of the Chargers. Now, I'm going to, I like to keep flipping and flopping. I think last week I said I'd, I'm going to be all in on the chart. I would be all in on the Chargers in week eight. I'm leaning more toward now. If I had Baltimore, I would definitely take Baltimore and then save, fade, fade slash save uh, the Chargers for week 13, 14, 17. Because week 17, it can get pretty dicey if you don't have those upper, yeah. upper echelon teams, you know the chargers could very, you know, Denver season's probably going to be over. That could, that's going to be a much superior pick to Jacksonville or Cleveland. And I can't remember the third one we talked about earlier for week 17, but you're going to be dropped J- Jacksonville, Cleveland, and well, Philly, but no, I mean the, the ones that are, that most people are going to have are uh, oh, the Ram, oh, the Rams, I guess. Right. But, so now, now I like fade save the Chargers next week. But I mean, if, if, if Chicago drops an egg and the Ram, and the Char- uh, the Bears drop an egg again, and the Chargers are thirteen point favorites, I'm probably just going to change my mind again, and I'll just, yeah, go, just, all and just, and just, just go all in on the Chargers. I just go all in on the Chargers, and and Baltimore is a fine team to have. Uh, you know, they don't they're not great because they have a big gap at the end of the season where there's no way you're ever using them. 15, so, 16, 17 is unplayable, but, you know, you could still use them in 14 or, or, or a couple against Seattle or Cleveland, I guess. So we have one, we have one entry where we intentionally use the Chargers like earlier so that we wouldn't even yeah. have to make this decision um, in eight. And, 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 but what, what the, what's happened now is we're, we're now reduced in that pool to make this type of decision. Like you look at an eight here, like we'll have, we'll have Miami available. We certainly could play them if we feel like it, but if we don't play them, then we're, we like really are like talking about stuff like Houston. The Love J- it. The Jets, Jets. you know, yeah. like it's a, so, so it's going to be an interesting decision of what we end up doing, whether we, uh, whether we go the, not Uber. I mean, it's not the, it's not going to be that popular because people have used Miami a lot, but, but, um, but, uh, you yeah, there's gonna be a lot. Them. There's a lot to be gained by taking Houston the Jets next week because oh, yeah. there's so many. Te- there's so many teams with above them, and every single outside of the Chargers, yeah, and Baltimore, all those other teams are teams you want people to use up. Yeah. So if you can get through with Houston or the or the Jets, teams that are more worthless and unusable than the teams we spoke about this week, they're they're less usable than Las Vegas, Cleveland. New Orleans, so, uh, lo- lo- a lot of potential advantage to be made there. Yeah, you're dropping off of an eight, nine, ten point favorite, but you're going to be f- either choose to do it or you're going to be forced onto it later. So if this um, is, I, 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 I like to choose rather than be forced. So this is the this is a funny dynamic in circle of people to look ahead to. So remember, there, there, there are Thanksgiving Day games that you have to you, people have to pick from, and that's the Dallas Washington game, Green Bay Detroit. Uh, Seattle, San Francisco, or Miami Jets, right? So at the beginning of the season, God, it's really incredible how, the, how this worked out. Right. It's, it's the top teams. It's incredible. Well, what's what's interesting is that it started off the season as usual with the question of, okay, is Dallas going to be eighty percent owned or not? Because Dallas is always eighty percent owned. They yeah. always look like the top team, whatever it is. And then, like during the course of the season, Dallas is looking sort of pedestrian. Detroit's looking much better. Miami looks like a wrecking machine. San Francisco looks like a wrecking machine. So you figure maybe not. But the way these other teams are being used now, at yeah. the end of the day, I think Dallas is going to be the big, huge chalk again at the end of the day because no one's really used Dallas. <laughs> Correct. And all these other teams are getting used. You know, Miami's getting used every week. San Francisco, remember, 50% of the pool emptied the clip on them in week four. You have Detroit, Miami, who's getting used literally every week. You know, so at the end of the day, Dallas once again is going to be like, the, like probably the the most popular team, you know. Um, I I I think just because of the I, I disagree. I I do not think they'll be the chalk team. I'm very okay. confident in that. Um, be, be, I I think they're going to be slammed in week ten. I I really do. That could be. Th- there's th- th- it when when sorting 
you can you can pull out San Francisco Buffalo. You're not going to get there. I think that between Cincinnati and Las Vegas, they're going to get they're going to get a big old dumping of those. That, yes, they, they definitely will. I I feel personally, if I was still in Circa, I would use Las Vegas this week. Four and nine, four and, nine. And, use Dal- and use Dallas and ten because then yeah, at least I'm getting the biggest I'm getting the biggest favorite in Dallas yeah. against yeah, the I Giants, agree. and you're you're not even dropping in twelve. I mean, right. you're going from a nine point favorite to a seven or a six and a half. What's the other game? And my oh my god, they're the top. They're four of the five yeah. games are the are Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving games, games. <laughs> um, or Miami. I I don't even know. I would I would never. Miami, if in Circa, I'm just, I'm gonna go for all of it. I, I'm holding Miami till week 15, I, I would think, and I would use Detroit here. Have all these teams, you know, and the then it, different spots. Well, along I, the but, way. But, but remember, I'm out. But if I made it, I would have. There's no way I would have used three or four of those teams. I, yeah. not, that, that's just not the way I play that, and that's right. why I got knocked out so early. San Francisco would be tempting to use an 11. Um, or uh, yeah, 11 because I, I would use Miami for 15. So I, I'm pretty confident I would be on Detroit for Thanksgiving personally. It, it You can't take an underdog, uh, which is great because when the spreads work out this way, and this has been evident for several weeks, when the underdogs are completely out of play for this four-game slate and all four of the teams are really valuable teams to have throughout the season – the strategy should be to hold on to all four of them as long as possible and start using them to get to Thanksgiving and then to drop at the end of the season. Of course, most people who use that strategy are going to be knocked out um, unless you got unless you picked Washington in week one and then the Rams last week. You, you, had, you had to go those two to get there. All right. I guess we'll wrap this up. Uh, um, uh Feel free, everybody post in Discord, any comments, if anybody's still in. Oh, one more comment. I had a friend reach out for help with his friend's pool. Oh. If you're in a pool with 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 not a lot of people, remember, my strategy is based on assuming this thing's going to go for a long time. A friend reached out. His friend is in a pool with 17 left, asked who he should pick this week. So I asked, obviously, who he has left, and I asked how many people have Buffalo remaining. There's 17 people left. Zero people have Buffalo. And I told him, tell your friend, do not take Seattle. You just can't do it. There's 17 people left. I don't know what they're playing for. It doesn't matter. If no one can take Buffalo, that means most people are just going to take Seattle. And if they take San Francisco or Kansas City, you, you gain a little bit. But it's an absolutely mandatory draw. So if you're if you're in a pool with – you know, a reasonable amount of people left. So I guess 17 is reasonable because yeah. everyone's used Buffalo in this pool. You need to start looking at pick availability because pick availability for this person, they cannot, I mean, they, sh- they shouldn't have picked Seattle anyway, but now they really can't. They know no one can take Buffalo. That means there's a chance that, I don't know, 14 people take Seattle be awfully silly to be the 15th person. So start to in weeks like this, look at pick of pick availability. If there's not a lot of people left in your pool. All right. Good luck everybody. And uh, we'll go. Hopefully we'll be back next week. See you later. See you next week. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Eric. See ya.